Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, my name's Will and this video is on handling state and state variables. Well, it's about how we go about writing our little programs to control our little robots or our little physics-like games. Uh, and we're also going to play Lunar Lander in code. We're going to spend most of it trying to land a Lunar Lander on the moon. Um, but first of all, let's just kind of situate where this is in the set of videos if you're watching them in order. And they're, they're, there's some writing here because you can also look through these as notes and you can kind of play the game in the notes as well. Uh, but so far, if you're watching these in order, uh, we've learnt a little bit about the language. We've seen variables, we've seen functions, we've seen control structures like while loops and for loops. Uh, we've seen a little bit on the ideas of controlling things. Um, but we haven't really talked a lot about, uh, well, OK, how do you use all that to write your program? How do you actually go about, here is some problem and I want to write a co uh, some code to solve it. Well, that is partly because different problems are different and so different problems end up with different code. Um, so some of the principles that we're going to talk about are a bit higher level. Um, but so to motivate you to start with, I'm just going to say that... Um, Half of it, and we'll see this little quote from me in a mo. half of the art of good programming is about making life easy for yourself, or at least your future self. Uh, so keeping functions short, uh, because in a week's time, when you come back and try and debug it, and you've forgotten a little bit about what you were thinking about, uh, a long tangly function would be quite hard to debug, hard to think about, whereas a short, clear, meaningful function would be a lot easier for you to think about. Uh, and I often say the other half is uh, making things easier for other people, the other people who have to work with your code or your users, etc., etc. Um, so the other side of it, though, is how we go about looking at the problem. And here again, we're kind of hunting for simplicity. If the model in our code fits the problems well, it's going to be easier to think about. So we are often asking ourselves, what is a way to think about this complex problem that's going to make it easy enough that we can think about it, write code and model it. How can we take this hideously complex problem, make it simple enough that even I can understand it on most days, not just on my best days? A um, couple of sayings that I use with this. One of you have already heard from me. Half the art of good programming is making life easy for yourself. The other half is making it easy for other people. Uh, one my dad liked. My dad's a professor of mechatronics and he had a line saying, everything is easy. Otherwise, the teacher wouldn't understand it. That's not a pejorative against teachers. He was the professor. He's the teacher. Um, it is, uh, again, trying to suggest that when we face these problems, we are looking uh, for the simplicity in them, or at least how to make things as simple as possible and no simpler so that they become tractable and we can manage it and we can write uh, code that we can work with to solve them, uh, rather than trying to come up with complex solutions so we can show how clever we are to think about something so complex. Uh, all right. Enough of the motivation. Let's get on to the problem. So we are going to talk quite a lot about state because we are doing these uh, physics games, these simulations. And, well, there's two ways that we're going to talk about state. Um, many of our games are little physics-like simulations. And uh, the more mathematically oriented people might start referring to some of those things as dynamical systems. In those... Uh, there tend to be some set of variables that you need just to describe the situation. And the engineers tend to call those the state variables. So, for instance, if you've got a cup of tea on the bench and it is getting cold and you want to model that cup of tea getting cold, well, the cup uh, of tea has a temperature. The air around it has a temperature. There is a volume of tea in the cup. There is a surface area of tea. Uh, tea that is exposed to the air, uh, etc, etc. So there's some set of variables that you would need in order to produce a good model that is going to uh, represent that, get, that tea getting cold. So these are like state variables. Programmers sometimes talk about state a little bit differently. Um, we will often talk about something have a, having a set of uh, states that it moves between, uh, what engineers would call a state machine. So, for instance, if you go to a website, it might behave differently depending on whether you're logged in or not. Uh, and so you, the user, can be in the logged in state and then you can hit the log out, uh, log out button and you move into the uh, logged out state. And things are going to behave differently depending on which state you're in. Uh, or in a computer game, well, we're going to head to the lava maze in a moment. Uh, a monster in the game might behave differently if it's asleep than if it's patrolling or hunting. And then an asleep monster 
probably not doing very much except snoring, might get woken up and go into the hunting state, irascibly hunting for whatever woke it up. And then after a while, it might go back and go back into the asleep state. And its behavior is going to depend on what state it's in. So that's kind of one of the little ways that uh, people tend to model these. Uh, we are possibly going to see a little bit of a mix of both of these, or at least we can do. So let me jump into the lava maze. Now, what I've got here, I have, uh, here is the lava maze, snowbot and a couple of blob guards and a goal. Not a particularly difficult to solve map, uh, but I've also extracted some of the state into some cards over here. If I press play, they're all going to change at once. It's going to be far too visually confusing. Uh, OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to hit reset on that. We're going to go to the next line. We'll kind of look at them kind of one one by one. So let's take a look at Snowbot first. So here is Snowbot and he has an X and a Y location. He has to have an X and Y location because we've got to know where to draw him. We've got to know um, whether he's bumped into uh, a blob guard, whether he's picked up a diamond, whether he's reached the gold, etc. So that X is 128, Y is 64. Those are like state variables. Uh, and that, that, that's his position on the map. Uh, he's also got what action he's doing at the moment. At the moment, it's doing the idle action. This is a bit more like the state machine thing. Um, so at the moment, his action is idle, and that means that his behavior is going to be he's just standing there. Well, except that my program is going to tell it what to do. You see that idle state has its own bit of state, whether it's finished or not, or how far through it is, as to whether it can take the next command. And so you'll see that uh, as we send him right, he starts doing actions that are moving to the next square, moving to the next square, moving to the next square. Uh, but those actions themselves have a little bit of state, which is how far through they are, whether they're ready for the next one or not. OK, and in that case, our program controls what the next action is going to be. Let's move on to the blob guards. So looks pretty similar in that we've got X and Y locations. We've got, you know, idle actions about whether they're there and whether they're uh, ready or not. And uh, in this case, they even take the same amount of time to go through. And, you know, that one's gone into the die state and so is that one, etc. And you can see their different locations as they go on. Of course, in this case, the code that is changing what, uh, their, what their next action is is inside the game itself. Now, in lots of games, I said you might have the case where a blob guard is on patrol, uh, like this one was just randomly going up, and another one that's you know trying to home in on the uh, person's location. You might have transitions between them. In fact, for this one, uh, I just set it up so that the blob guards have uh, they always use the same strategy. So this one here is on patrol, just moving in random directions, uh, while the other one he over here uh, has a homing strategy. It will always decide to uh, I think uh, try try to home in on the square that Snowbot uh, is in. Uh, but fortunately, we managed to sneak past it. OK, so that's those ones. Um, the boulders, similar sort of thing. In this game, actually, the boulders are also done in terms of mobs, they call it, you know, mo mobile things in the game. And so the game, they have uh, X and Y locations. They've got what action they're currently doing. In this case, of course, the action that they want to make, uh, well, that logic depends on what is going on uh, on the screen around them. Uh, so particularly, they need to see, am I blocked from moving downwards? And so Snowbot blocks that one, the blob guard doesn't, and it goes whack uh, and gets rid of the blob guard. Uh, down here, well, it's blocked from moving downwards, but it also has a little bit of a check as to would the object, uh, would any of the objects stop me from trying to move diagonally, going right and down or left and down? And so that is how that one works. OK, bit long-winded, but that is some of the state that is going on inside the lava maze game itself um, but the lava maze isn't actually written in javascript and it's probably a bit big to get you to you know go and actually write the game so let us instead pick a complex situation that we can start handling some of these things in and we can start writing code uh, to solve uh, you know control a robot in a weird situation let us go and land on the moon well here we have our lunar lander uh, this lunar lander is going to have a main thruster. So at the moment, it's, it, you'll, you'll notice that it's sitting at a little bit of an angle. Uh, if I press play, it's going to drop down and it won't explode, but that was not a successful landing. Uh, you'll notice that to make things a little bit harder for us, I'm actually starting it in a random orientation. It's not uh, always pointing straight up. Um, our lander has a main thruster. 
And so I could go and say, look, I would like to set the main thrust and I can set it anywhere between zero and one. So if I said it's one, well, now we're gonna go rocketing off the map in that direction, uh, rocketing off the map in that direction, rocketing off up into space. Um, I could set it a little bit less than that. Uh, well, let's set it a lot less than that. Uh, in which case it's probably going to be a little bit weak and oops, didn't do much with gravity. Let's set it a bit bigger and well, we're powering ourselves downwards. Let's set it a little bit bigger um, again. And you know, there, there is some number that is actually quite close to what gravity is. I think it's 0 0.096. Uh, so this thing can put out 10 Gs in its vertical thrust. It's pretty, it's pretty powerful. Um, it's also got two thrusters on each side. And so that is going to let us do things like, well, we are facing straight downwards. I would like to set some turn thrust. And if I go positive, it should go clockwise. Negative, it should go anti-clockwise. Um, again, anywhere between, well, in this case, between minus one and one. Uh, let's just go pretty gently. Let's go to about, well, let's go about 0.2. And so now that is generally spinning ourselves. Okay. Uh, let's go a little bit harder. Go at one and wow, we really spin ourselves, but we're still falling downwards and uh, well, the spin seems to bounce us away. We could uh, spin ourselves in the other direction. Let's do that. And yep, spinning in the other direction, still way out of control and bouncing off in space. Uh, but we could instead of, you know, set one going this way and one going this way, we could set them on one side. So we could, instead of going set turn thrust, we could go, all right, I want to set side thrust. And so again, this goes uh, from minus one to one. So if I go minus one, I'll try and shift left in the perspective of this. So that should shoot us up uh, off into space a little bit. Uh, or this way should shoot us down, oh, sorry, that way. Um, if I set it to one, uh, it should try and thrust the, uh, it'll turn the left thrusters on pushing it rightwards. Uh, so there it goes rocketing that way, uh, or there it goes rocketing that way. Now, that was the introduction to the controls, but this also has some state. It's got, uh, it's got it, you know, its properties in terms of where it is. Let me delete that and let me just turn these on. Uh, so if I just go show state, it's going to print in blue on the right hand side, some of the state that's going on with this. So it's got an X and a Y location. Uh, it's got a velocity in the X location. Is it is it moving this way? Is it moving that way? It's got a velocity in the Y direction. Uh, how fast it's going downwards. Uh, it's got an angle. How far off center it is in radians. So 5.4 is kind of all the way around there. And it's got an angular velocity. How fast is it turning and whether it's turning clockwise or anti-clockwise. And so that's the stuff that we're going to use. That information uh, using functions like, you know, get x, get y, get vx, get vy, get angle, get angular velocity, and the thrusters, uh, we are going to try and land our lunar lander over here. Um, so that's a, a bit of a distance away. I think it's about 3,960 away in the, the unit system of this simulation. And it's a small green pad over there. And it might be an interesting job hitting it when we are uh, starting in a random orientation and uh, falling towards the ground. So let's make this problem a little bit smaller. Let's not try and solve the whole thing at once. Let's talk about little bits of control that we might do along the way. Use it as some examples. Uh, so let's uh, leave that one there and pop to a slightly simpler one. So here I've got my uh, my space uh, lander and here it is always starting out pointing the right way up and the ground is just totally flat. So we are just going to land it. We're just going to control it vertically. And I'm going to talk about, you know, different ways that we could control this uh, this lander. So one of them is we could decide that we're going to do what's called a proportional control system. And so this is feedback control. We measure, uh, we, we sense an input, how fast are we moving in this direction? And then we think about, well, okay, how fast do we want to be moving in that direction, some target. And the difference between those is the error, how far we are away from our target velocity. 
And so in proportional control, what we could do is say, well, we are going to set our thrusters proportional to that error. I mean, if we're going too slowly, well, we can't do negative thrust with that main thruster, so we'll just let gravity do the work for us. Uh, but if we are going too fast, then we will set our thruster proportional on how fast we're going. Now, I've got the code uh, in here over here for this. So we are just going to show the state and that's just going to show our VX, VY, etc. This is our proportional control function. Whoops, sorry, I accidentally scrolled it off the off the off the screen. So I've said that we have this target of our vertical velocity being two in the unit system that the simulation uses. We've said, well, we're going to get our vertical velocity and we're going to subtract that two. So we've got how much faster than two are we going? Well, it's going to be negative if we're uh, going slower than two. And then what I'm going to say is, well, OK, let's let our thrust be 0 0.9. So some proportion times that error. And then I've just said, well, look, uh, we've just got to make sure that uh, we're not setting it faster than one because we can't thrust faster than one. And we're not setting it uh, below zero because we can't turn the thrust to negative. And so that is our proportional control function. And so then down here, what I've said is, look, let's wait. Let's let this shuttle go 250 ticks so that it can pick up some speed and then we'll turn our control system on. And we will just say forever while true then get the thruster power we want to do from our um, uh, our control function, set the thrust, and I'd also like to print out what the thrust is so that we can kind of see it going past here. Right, that's enough waffle. Let's press play and we can see it drop for 250 ticks and then we see it slows itself down. And so that proportional control came in. The um, thrust was initially big because we were going much too fast, like eight times too fast and eight times point nine, seven point two bigger than one. So the thruster started off on full, pretty powerful thruster, slowed us down pretty quickly and then the rate could come down. So let's just let that go and let's have a look. So our thruster went one and then started coming down uh, actually pretty rapidly, nine point point nine eight point nine eight. And you can kind of see that dropped pretty fast because the thruster did such a good job slowing us down. And then it stayed steady-ish at about 0 0.09666. So that roughly has trended in to how much thrust is needed to counteract gravity on this particular mood. So it looks like that is the thrust that's needed to match gravity, about 0 0.096. All right. Enough on that one. That looks pretty mathematical. That looks like something that, you know, someone in a control theory class might think about and they might then work out, OK, and so what is the velocity it ends up uh, stable at? About 2.1. So it ends up going, you know, with the error big enough that the thrust that we work out is just enough to counteract gravity. Let's leave that for control theory courses. Let's switch to a different kind of control where we can just decide, you know what, this is a computer. Let's rely on the fact that this is a computer and we can turn things on and off really quickly. Let us go to bang, bang control. Previously, we looked at that error. How much fast, uh, how much too fast are we going as a, you know, a scalar variable? It was a number. What if instead we decide that, you know what, I'm just going to ask myself the question, am I going too fast? If I'm going too fast, slow myself down. If I'm not going too fast, turn the thruster off. And uh, we are just going to have that thruster on full or off. We're not going to worry about what the proportion is. And so this is called on off control or sometimes bang bang control because you're going to the two extremes of your control system. It's on or it's off. Over in the code, we're going to show show this the the um the state variables, the simulation again in terms of the 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 xy's etc. Um, but here I have this thing that is working out effectively this bit of derived state. Am I going too fast or not? And so then my code, well, we wait 250 ticks for it to pick up some speed before we turn it on. But then our control loop just goes forever. If I'm going too fast, turn the thruster on, otherwise turn it off. And so again, these are all quite hopefully quite short, clear and meaningful. Let's hit play. And so we see that drop and then bang, 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 bang. 
and you can see that it slowly uh, descends. And in fact, because we're doing this bang bang control, it's going to, it, it, its speed's going to oscillate around that um, two point zero mark. Uh, so it, as it was going down, you'd, uh, you'd you'd see it going, you know, one point something, two point something, one point something, two point something, and it's going to be pretty close to two is the average. Whereas the proportional control, there was some equilibrium that it met that was about two point one. All right. That is controlling it vertically. Let's have a look, however, at this problem that our landing pad is not directly underneath us. Our landing pad is all the way over here. How are we going to control ourselves to get from there over here? Now, for our hobbyist stuff, we can kind of cheat a little bit. I talk a lot about closed loop control and how we, we can use that. When we're doing this kind of hobbyist robots and games, we might not actually do controlled loop. Uh, closed loop control all the time. Um, the analogy I'll use for a moment is how people point with the mouse. If I wanted to put the mouse on the space shuttle, then I might move very quickly somewhere nearby and then control my mouse onto the target. Uh, it seems to be what people uh, tend to do in, in, uh, according to research. Well, we can do the same sort of thing. We can go, you know what, I am just going to have a big old swoop to get myself somewhere in the vicinity before I start trying any of this fancy closed loop control. Let's just go, you know, it's about yay far. Let's throw about yay much time of thrust at it and work out how to get there. <clears throat> but being a computer program, we could tune that a little bit. So what I've suggested we do here, and I've got some parameters that I've extracted out into a little table. And as I change those, those are going to open edit things in code. There's that 0.96 for how much thrust to just, you know, keep vertically to keep ourselves hovering. So that was 0.096. And as I've been typing, that's been appearing in my code. So let's just work out if I just turn the thruster on and wait a while and then turn the thruster backwards and wait a while. So accelerate for a bit and slow down for a bit and then turn the thrusters off. Hopefully I can move myself sideways some distance and end up, you know, roughly still. Um, there we go. Then it ended up a bit more still. Let's work out what that power and timing needs to be to move myself, say, 100 pixels. Uh, so if I press play on that, well, it looks like I've moved 250 pixels. I've got a couple of choices in how I can do this. I could go and go, well, let's, if that moved us 250, let's uh, shrink the ticks down a bit. And 17, 120, a bit too much. Uh, 16, 195, ugh, is a little bit less. Uh, in fact, the other thing that I could do, though, is let's set that back to 25. And, you know, that turned out to be this nice, neat, 250, two and a half times too much. Let's just turn the power down by two and a half times. So let us set the side thrust to 0 0.4 for 25 ticks, then to minus 0 0.4 for 25 ticks, and then turn it off. And now I actually move pretty nicely 100 pixels. Um, OK, I've got this distance thing here. What that is doing is that is saying, well, depending if I want to move a bigger distance, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for i is 0 to however many times bigger that is, move right 100 pixels. And so if I want to move 3000 pixels, that should call my move right 100 function 30 times. And so let's set that going once, twice, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. There we go. And you know what? X is now 4,004 and it started out 1,000. We've ended up only four units out uh, moving right uh, that amount. So that is a, you know, a pretty coarse way that I could make myself move a, a biggish distance. To get to that one, I think I need to move 3,960. OK, that's not quite divisible by um, uh, uh, by 100, so it's not going to do the last one. It'll try and move 3,900. Uh, but I'm going to end up somewhere vaguely in the vicinity of this little green pad. Uh, and then, OK, I've got the question. Uh, whoops. Has that gone? Maybe I wanted to... Whoops, have I gone too far? Maybe 2,960. see if that gets near the pad. Problems of live coding and talking as you're coding. Sometimes you make little mistakes. And uh, no, 
that's a little bit short, isn't it? That is a little bit short. We did want to, I did think it was this. Let's try it again. Let's try it again. Sometimes we'll get some errors and we won't land up quite in the right, spa, uh, right spot. But, you know, let's uh, just see if uh, see if this will work. There we go. That's not bad, I think. If I just let that slowly descend, I think I would just about hit my green pad. And so that is just very coarsely trying to move in 100 unit inter intervals. Of course, it's dreadfully inefficient. We're uh, speeding up, slowing down, speeding up, slowing down. OK, if this is some, you know, parameterized guess, well, one of the things we could do is make a better guess. So. If I was to go, you know what, this is um, Newtonian physics. This is, um, you know, speed is distance times time. Um, velocity is acceleration times time. And if I, you know, we work it out, um, then uh, if we accelerate from a standstill, uh, distance is, I'm sorry, there's a little mistake in there. Distance is a half um, acceleration times um, time squared. Uh, I'll fix that on the slide. Sorry, it's, it, it will be wrong in the video. Um, OK, in which case, if I wanted to solve for time, I could, uh, you know, take the distance and the half over here. And so it's going to be the time is going to be square root of some number times the distance uh, where that number is dependent on what our acceleration is. Uh, now, in this case, I happen to have set this up so it should work pretty well straight off the bat. So that just accelerated halfway and slowed down halfway. And so it was two of these spots where we we're going, well, this distance is going to be half acceleration times time uh, uh, time squared. And this distance is going to be half acceleration times time squared. Let's find a time that works for that to get us in roughly the right spot. Um, if I wanted, you know, there's going to be a few different solutions to this. If I put the power up, you'll notice, OK, that is going to go whoa, way too far. All right. If I want to find a, a, a parameter B, uh, for uh, for my distance, if if uh, for what I want to put into that into that square root uh, for that, well, 0.02 was too big. Uh, let's go down a bit. Let's go 0.01, and uh, 0.01 seems to work. There we go. 0.01 seemed to work. Uh, but you know, you might have started way out. Uh, it's just a matter of going. Nope, too big. Uh, all right, yeah, that was good. Uh, but, you know, I might have gone instead uh, too small to start with and then had to make it bigger. Uh, so this is just kind of playing around with parameters again to work out, OK, what could I put into a big old swoop? It's still open loop control because I'm not actually doing any measurements here. I'm just turning a thing on for a certain time and turning it off for a certain time, depending on what the distance I want to go is. Uh, now, in the code over here, uh, we can see the code for doing this again, turning the, the, the state display on our function for move right. Uh, so I've put that into something neatly understandable, hopefully, where we work out, OK, what our time t is going to be. And we then say, turn the thrusters on. Wait times t times, well, this 16.6 is because each tick in the game is 16.6 .6 milliseconds. Uh, then it slow down for time t times 16.6 .6 milliseconds uh, ticks. Um, and then set the side thrust to zero, stop, uh, so that hopefully we will now be at rest and we won't keep accelerating off somewhere, and then hopefully we're done. OK, I probably spent a little bit long uh, uh, talking about that one, uh, but that is also, you know, it's much quicker and it's much more efficient because we're not st speeding up, slowing down, speeding up, slowing down. Once we get there, we will probably be a little bit wrong. Our parameters might not be perfect. We might be, you know, there's the pad and we're over here. But that's OK, because what we can do is after we've taken our big open loop swoop to get vaguely into the ballpark, we can then start homing in on the target. So this one I've set up so that our lander starts uh, somewhere that is, you know, it's slightly different each time, but is in the ballpark of this landing pad. And so then what we're going to do is we're going to have a little home in function that is going to adjust our um, position sideways to try and hit the pad. And so let's let that go and you'll see it moves left a bit, nope too far, right a bit, nope too far, left a bit, nope too far. And that is a closed loop control thing, just bringing ourselves down onto the pad. Now, the way this one is written, well, first of all, turning the state on. 
then I say I want to show where my target is. Now I happen to know that this pad, my target is going to be at 4960 is going to be the position. So in this case I happen to be straight above it so let's just change it so that I'm not. My home in thing says well I'm going to have some thruster I'm going to power that I'm going to use for my homing function and then what I'm going to say is I'm going to say if something or other is bigger than the target if I'm too far right then thrust left otherwise thrust right and so this is going to be a little like that bang bang control but with my power set to 0 0.1 there's one extra trick that I've done here you'll notice this doesn't just go off the x position instead this is like saying okay don't worry about where I am right now given my current velocity where would I be in 10 seconds time uh, and so this just has the it has the effect because of the way the control stuff works um, of applying a little bit of damping to it. So it goes, OK, if in 10 seconds I would have drifted past the target, I want to slow down. If in 10 seconds I wouldn't have reached the target, I want to speed up. Uh, and if I keep doing that, you'll see that I kind of get this damped oscillation coming down onto the target uh, at the same time. I've got to control my descent. And so this, you know, I've got my bang, bang control. Am I going too fast or not? And so again, that is put into hopefully a clear little function so that I can make this meaningful. So here I've got home in all the horizontal spot. You'll notice I've got a little comment as well to say that's what it's doing. So I'm not just relying on the um, on the name of the uh, on the name of the, of the function. I can also add in little comments to uh, kind of give myself notes and explain things. Uh, and this one, are we descending too fast? Function too fast is Vy bigger than five. And so then my control loop, well, I've got controlling my descent at this particular moment. So you'll notice this isn't a while. This is just an if. If I'm going too fast, turn the thrust on. Otherwise, turn the thrust off. And that is because in every tick, I'm going to want to control myself horizontally and I'm going to want to control myself vertically. So forever, have a look at the side, st uh, side stuff. In 10 seconds time, would I have sailed past the target? In which case, slow down. If in, in 10 seconds time, would I have sailed past, uh, would I not have reached the target? So speed up. Uh, and am I going too fast vertically? If so, slow down. If I'm not going too fast vertically, turn the thruster off. And so that is how it then controls both directions at the same time and settles in on the target. So the upshot of this is that if we start over here, we can take our big old guess that's going to get us vaguely in the ballpark of the landing pad and then turn on our control functions and start narrowing in on the target. So we've got two stages in our strategy. And so this is a bit like having some uh, having some states that we move through. We've got this make a big rough move to where we want to be while hovering and then home in on the target while descending carefully. All right, that's only half the problem. I wanted to make this really complex and so in our puzzler we had it so that the ship doesn't start upright. Now that is going to cause me a problem because as soon as I turn that thruster on I'm going to go rock, uh, sorry set, not set turn set thrust. Uh, as soon as I turn that main thruster on if I don't know what which way I'm facing I don't know which way I am going to be rocketing. So I can't do any of this, not even the big old swoop to the right, until I've got myself upright, because I don't know which way right is. And I'd better do that quickly, because all the time that I am the wrong way up, I am falling and I don't have anything counteracting gravity. So we had better start rotating ourselves first. Now, I happen to have some crib notes because uh, I'm not always good at uh, programming while talking at the same time. Uh, but let us uh, do something very, very similar. Uh, so what I am going to do uh, is I am going to start off by saying that the first thing I want to do is spin myself so that I'm nearly upright. This is like the big old guess to get myself vaguely upright. So spin ourselves to nearly upright. And I'm going to put this in a function. So function, let's go spin left. Let's not worry about which way we need to go. Let's just always go anti-clockwise. Uh, all right, what do I need to do in that? Well, um, the thing that I had was uh, in the sideways. 
uh, was that I needed to solve for time, basically that distance is equal to 0.5 times acceleration times the square of time. Uh, now for angular stuff, that is kind of the same. It's just that instead of it being a distance, it's um, the you know the angle that we will travel through uh, times the um, the angular um, uh, acceleration that we put in. So what I'm going to need to do, uh, let me pop back and look at my crib notes. I often look at, you know, things that I've done beforehand. So this was my cleverer guess. Let us say look, we wanted to have something a little bit like that. So this is going to look um, kind of similar. Ooh, that text. OK, but. So this is going to spin left some angle. But here's the thing, it's going to be uh, the constant is going to be psi times the angle that we want to go. And it's not going to be side thrust, it's going to be turn thrust. And if we want to go anti-clockwise, it's going to be minus one and then one. And then we are going to want to turn our thrusters off. Uh, now, let me just play around with, let's go spin left and see if we can spin a full 360 and stop. Two times math dot pi radians. And my guess is that these numbers will turn out to be horribly wrong. Uh, and so, oops, that that looked pretty brief, didn't it? Hmm, all right, is that too low? Let's turn that number up. Okay, that looked closer but not quite enough yet, is it? Let us try uh, a bit more than that. Let's go two times angle. And I think we're still... Are we getting there yet? We're not quite getting there yet. It looks like it needs to be a little bit bigger. Now, this is where I'm going to cheat. And rather than just playing with those numbers forever, I am going to pop to my crib notes for when I did this. So what I, in fact, did was that it, uh, the 16.6 still stayed there. Uh, oh, I did in fact have um, two times the angle as being what I did to get nearly upright. So it looks as though I actually decided, you know what, for what I need to do, this is close enough. That is close enough to spin us roughly that angle. And so now what I want to do is I instead want to spin left by what my current angle is. And though hopefully, That'll bring us nearly upright. Yep. Nearly upright. Nearly upright. Nearly upright. Nearly upright. A little bit off. I probably wouldn't yet want to just go set thrust to 0 0.096 um, and just start hovering in expecting it to stay totally still because I'm going to start motoring myself sideways by uh, whatever the error was. Uh, but, you know, that is pretty good I think that's that that is not bad all right if that's the case let's now have a another function that we're going to do which is going to stabilize our angle so now if that was the big old swoop on the angle um, uh, let us now do the control theory thing where we stabilize ourselves uh, stabilize ourselves upright so let me go function stabilize and so what I'm going to say here uh, is and I'm going to base this one on the one that I did for homing in uh, over here uh, so what I wanted to say was something a little bit like if where I am in 10 seconds is going to be wrong then change my thrust so let me go and paste that in and yeah, all right, power can be 0.1. But now I'm not interested in the x, I'm interested in the angle. And I'm not interested in the vx, I'm interested in the angular velocity. Uh, that is this one down here. And if in 10 seconds time, I'm going to be in the wrong place there. All right, so now let me do that. Let me spin left, turn the thruster on a little bit and go... Well, let's just go while true, stabilize and see ourselves, see if we can manage to then get ourselves a little bit upright and hovering. And that seems not to be quite working, is it? 
Uh, okay, so, oh, there, there we go. Oh, that's my problem. I'm still adjusting the side thrust, whereas I need to adjust the turn thrust. And in this case, uh, well, I haven't said what the target is, uh, but my target, if I'm trying to stabilize myself upright, is to get that angle to zero. All right, clear that. And let's try and run that now. And there we go. And that is now getting itself upright and just descending gradually. Maybe let's let's make that thrust a little bit bigger. And so still descending a little bit. But it'll kind of do for the moment. Uh, now, so that would do a nice -ish landing sort of. Uh, oh, there we go. That's because uh, we'd already picked up a little bit of momentum. We were counteracting gravity, but we weren't actually um, slowing our descent uh, when we had it at point 0.096. So we're just going at whatever speed we picked up when we were turning. Now, if the landing pad was straight underneath us, that would all be fine. But unfortunately, the landing pad isn't straight underneath us. The landing pad is all the way over here. So now I want to do my big old swoop across uh, so that I can get close. But well, I don't want to do it straight away. I've got to work out, OK, how soon do I figure I'm stable enough that I'm happy to turn the th side thrusters on without thinking I'm going to either shoot up into space or shoot down uh, and hit the ground? Uh, so now I would like to create a new little bit of kind of higher level state. Let's call this, are we stable yet? And so this is going to be our function is stable. Uh, and it's you know going to derive it off whether we are close enough to upright and not moving. Uh, so what I care about is, is the angle close enough to upright? Uh, let's say 0. Point, what should we go with? 0. 0.05, we're going to adjust this later. Uh, but I also care about whether I'm moving, because if I'm upright, but I'm still turning pretty fast, that's going to be a bit of a problem. So get angular velocity is less than 0. Point, and let's just go with, let's just put in a number for the moment. We'll turn show state on uh, and then uh, we'll have a look at that and we'll tune it. Um, but there's another little bit of a bit of a problem. Uh, if I've gone that way, so at the moment, uh, you know, I might oversteer and my uh, angle might be negative. So I just want to get math.ab. So take the any minus signs off these before I do the comparison. And so this is only going to return true and say I'm stable if I'm near enough upright and near enough not turning. So now I can say while not stable, stabilize. And then I can, just so that I can see what's happening, let me go, let's set side thrust of one and start rocketing myself sideways as soon as I think I'm stable. And, oops, sorry, while not is stable. Uh, sorry, I called the, the function slightly different. There we go, stabilize, and as soon as we think we're stable enough, we go sideways. And okay, we're still descending because we still picked up that little bit of velocity while we were turning around, but uh, we are doing it mostly upright. Uh, and so I think we're okay there to do our bit of a swoop across if we can get to the right spot. Uh, now, let me go um, show, show state at the beginning of this. Uh, so that we can see what those numbers are. Show state. And now we can see, okay, so angular velocity really is quite small. So that is why angular velocity, I've got this test at 0 0.001, because angular velocity is normally something that is uh, pretty small in our simulation. Uh, angle, um, I tell you what, I can tune that. I could make that even smaller. I could make that 0 0.01. One, and then that's going to just take longer getting itself stable uh, and before it shoots off sideways. Uh, you'll notice that the, the angle, you know, it does drift a little bit because I still do have some angular velocity. Um, you know, if I wanted, I could, uh, should we go point a bit, little bit less and that'll kind of keep us a bit more upright with the trade-off that we take longer stabilizing. Okay, I've labored that point enough. 
I've now got ourselves so we're upright and we're ready to do this big old swoop. Let's go and do that big old swoop. So here we said that spin left took uh, that and did some equation on it. Let's now go and uh, what did I call this? I call this move right. All right, so let's go move right of some distance. And this was where we had our we had our parameters. And what were our parameters that we ended up with? We ended up with um, power one and 0.01 for the um, for B. All right, so let's pop back over here. So, uh, oops, need to put that in here. And so that's got to become distance because it's distance, not angle, power one. And yeah, so that is, uh, thrust is one okay, but so set aside thrust, set aside thrust, set aside thrust. And so hopefully that would be able to move right the right amount of distance. Now I need to get to 4960. So if I move right 3960, and so there we go, uh, whoops. I've clearly got these the wrong way around because I'm trying to move left. Let's try that again. And stabilize itself. Oh no, that looks like I, I went I went way too far, didn't I? Oh, was it 0 0.01? Uh, so let's let's just bring that parameter down a little bit. Yes, it was 0 0.01. And I'm almost in the right spot. Okay, I'm still drifting a little bit, so I didn't land. Uh, but you know, I've got my controller, so now my shuttle. It's kind of nearly getting there. I mean, that one, that one there was pretty good. Okay, once I've got that close, then I just want to start doing some of this homing in, really. And I'd, though I'd like to fix my, uh, my angle a little bit, too. So now let me start writing uh, our home in functions. So function home in horizontally. And so this is going to get called each tick during the descent to try to line up with the pad. OK, and what did we say we wanted to do? We, we said that what we wanted to, uh, was we've got some target. Well, let's just pass target in uh, as a parameter. And let's say if where we're going to be in some amount of time, so 10 seconds time, so 10 times our horizontal velocity is bigger than the target, then I would like to, uh, let's, let's put a power in here, const power, just so we make it easy to use the same power in both places. Uh, then let's go set side thrust um, of power um, set side thrust. No, I want to go left, don't I, if I've gone too far. Otherwise, set side thrust power. All right. That's what we're doing there. And we want to set that to 0 0.1. OK, so um, I mean, we could just go while true. We, we, we've not controlled everything yet, though. So while true, home in horizontally of 3960. You know what? I've got this magic number, 3960, twice. So I would like to put that into a variable or a constant. So let me say const target is 3960. So this is the constant outside the functions of target as opposed to the local variable target in here. So if you remember shadowing this target here, uh, well, we're going to pass that one in, but these are different variables. Um, OK, so move right. Uh, sorry, target is 4960. So move right, target minus get x, and then home in horizontally on the target. OK, how are we doing? Spin, stable, moves, and home in horror. Oh, I've missed a, I've missed an eye out. Let's try that again. Moves, and it looks like it's, yep, it's doing the homing in over the pad. Yeah, but we've still just set our thrust at uh, 0.96. We've actually got to start controlling our descent, haven't we? Um, so let us now uh, control our descent as well. So function. 
control descent and in this case I'm just going to put the speed that we want to be going in here is going to be five and I'm just going to do my am I going too fast just directly uh, directly in here um, and so I can say if get vy is bigger than target if I'm going too fast then set thrust of one else set thrust of zero and so this is going to control our descent to five whatever the unit system is inside the simulation and this is called every tick during the descent you'll notice it's not a while loop uh, it is just an if and so what we want to do is we want to put it in here so home in horizontally and control the descent And now we're sort of going down okay. We're homing in horizontally. We're still at a little bit of an angle, aren't we? That's kind of not so great. I tell you what, shall we just sneak in a stabilize thing in here? We're going to run into a problem that stabilize and homing in horizontally are using the same thrusters. So this might not work. Okay. And so, yeah, that, 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 that's kind of interfered with each other as to which one's winning. And so we kind of can't quite do that. Um, but so instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I only want to do that when I find really sure that I'm stable. And I might, of course, have got unstable through that move right. So I'm going to put in another stage over here that just says, while I'm not stable, stabilize myself. Moves right, stops, stabilizes itself, homes in, controlling its descent. And it's got a little bit of a lean there. What's going on with that little bit of a lean? Was that a bug that I put in there? Uh, or was that just a case that I need to turn my angular velocity and my stabilize uh, limit down a little bit? So let's stabilize ourselves a little bit more. That's looking better, isn't it? That looks like a pretty good landing. Okay. So we spin, we stabilize ourselves, we then big old swoop to the right, and then we control ourselves into a landing. And you'll notice that I'm actually falling quite a bit while I'm doing this. So I, I, I am relying on the fact that uh, these peaks aren't so high that I hit the ground before I get there. Uh, but that was landing on the moon. Now, the next thing I might want to do is this code is hopefully relatively uh, understandable, but I might want to improve the commenting on it. Uh, or I might at least, because, you know, I've got to get down here and I haven't really said what is going on. So let me now put in a comment between asterisks and say that our uh, landing procedure goes through five phases. First of all, we rotate to nearly upright. Second, we begin hovering and stabilize ourselves upright. Third, we swoop across to roughly near the target. Fourth, we stabilize ourselves upright again. And then fifth, we home in on the target while controlling our descent. Now, because we are just going through those in order, uh, we're kind of able to do it just as a sequence of things we're going through. And so this is running like a series of phases that we're constantly moving forwards in. If, however, uh, we had things that could happen along the way. So, for instance, if there was an atmosphere and suddenly we could get a gust of wind that could mean that we're no longer stable, we're no longer um, in the right spot, we've got shifted sideways, we might instead treat those as being different states. We've got the, um, the, the getting ourselves nearly upright state. We've got the, the, the stabilizing state. Uh, we've got the, um, the moving to the target state. And we might start treating those as state transitions that we would actually model by having some variable, uh, you know, stabilizing 
and deciding what we are doing based on what phase we're in. And we might do that so that we can control the transitions between them and have checks on, well, you know, if we're getting down here and there's a gust of wind, maybe we need to go, nope, we are going back into the stabilizing state uh, before we finish ho homing in. OK, but so that was a case of live coding uh, a relatively complex uh, simulation, landing on the moon, um, but hopefully showing you a few of the different strategies you might, you might have. Uh, so if you're doing line followers, you might find things like, well, if you want to turn 90 degrees, then you won't always just follow the line 90 degrees. You might turn close to 90 degrees and then rely on the fact that following the line afterwards is going to straighten you up again. Um, hopefully it's also shown a little bit about uh, writing clear, meaningful little functions that have a particular purpose. Spin left just does the bit of getting us nearly upright. Uh, move right just does the big old swoop to somewhere over here. Um, stabilize. So these are all, you know, small enough that a week later, hopefully I could come back to this, see, OK, this is what it's doing. Oh, yes, I see how the code's doing that. I could put some comments down in the code to actually say what we're doing uh, at these particular bits. You know, here, for instance, I might want to say start hovering um, because that 0.96, that's a magic number that happens to match what I need to counteract gravity. Uh, so I could still improve the commenting on this, but hopefully a week later, my future me or someone else trying to read your code uh, could actually read that and see uh, roughly what is going on in it. Um, but yeah, I could improve the comments. All right, I think this video has gone on long enough. Uh, at the time I stopped it, uh, if you go to the slide decks, you can play around with this simulation too. Uh, for some of these, the code is already in there for you to play with. For some of them, uh, there's a, 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 a nice spot for you to uh, just, you know, play with code, uh, whether in the uh, tiles mode uh, or in the text mode. And thank you for listening.